Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com, and today I'm here to talk to you about citric acid and its role in making bath fizzies. Can you make bath bombs without citric acid? Let's find out. If you're unfamiliar with what a bath fizzy recipe is, it's a mixture of sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, and citric acid. It's usually a two to one ratio. Two parts baking soda to one part citric acid. The combination of these two ingredients is what makes the fizzing reaction happen. Once you get those two ingredients mixed together, you can add other skin-loving ingredients or fun ingredients like glitter, or you can add skin-loving oils like coconut oil or cocoa butter. But at its core, a bath fizzy is those two ingredients, baking soda and citric acid. That's the way you're gonna get the most fizzing reaction. However, citric acid can be a little hard to find. You can sometimes find it in natural food stores, sometimes find it in places that sell beer and wine making equipment, or of course you can find it online at places like brambleberry.com. Baking soda is very easy to find most anywhere, and it's also inexpensive. So if you can't find citric acid, is there something else you could use? Well, the internet sure says there is. So I'm here to test out some of those very common ideas and suggestions that people have and show you what works and what doesn't work. If you'd like to compare this fizz to a traditional recipe, go ahead and look at my surprise bath bomb video. I'm gonna put the link right in the description below and then you can see what a bath fizzy does when you use traditional ingredients like baking soda and citric acid. But for now, let's try some other things. Citric acid is found naturally in a lot of fruits and vegetables. Actually, lemon, for example, has the most citric acid of most of the fruits and vegetables. Lemon juice is one of those really common things that people often suggest replacing citric acid with because lemons do contain a little bit of citric acid. So I tried this out earlier and while you notice this is really crumbly, the two sides are definitely not sticking together and let's just pop that in some water and see if it fizzes. Ooh, not a lot of fizz. I mean a little bit because lemon juice does contain a little bit of natural citric acid, but this, I don't know about you guys, this is definitely not the amount of fizz I want. And um, is it just me or is that like yellow streaking? Another popular alternative I see mentioned out there on the internet for replacing citric acid in your bath fizzies is cream of tartar. Now, I don't know about you guys, but have you seen the price of cream of tartar at the grocery store? This little guy was over $5. That's doesn't seem that economical to me, but let's go ahead and try this anyways. And of course, brambleberry.com sells cream of tartar in bulk and it is a lot cheaper. This one I went ahead and wet with some witch hazel. It looks like this has a little bit more kind of, well, good consistency. It's nice and hard, but let's see how it fizzes. You ready? Huh, all right. It's got a little bit more fizz than the bath fizzy that I made with just lemon juice, but. It still doesn't fizz nearly as much as a traditional bath fizzy that is made with citric acid. One other common thing I've really seen mentioned out there to replace citric acid is cornstarch. Now, yeah, cornstarch is in a lot of traditional bath fizzy recipes because it is a hardener, it is a stabler, it's a scent fixative, and it really helps to soften water. So I see that a lot, but can you replace citric acid with the cornstarch? Let's take a look. Oh. Okay, so this is looking really murky. That's not really appealing. Let's see if it's dissolving. Oh, yeah, that is not dissolving. That's really goopy. Well, it looks kind of fun. Maybe kids would like it. So can you make a bath fizzy without citric acid? Well, sort of. I mean, it kind of just depends on how much fizz you're looking for. Personally, I like a lot of fizz, but if you're just looking for a fragrance delivery system or a way to get in those skin-loving oils into your tub and you're not really interested in the fizz, sure, try those other methods. But um, they're kind of expensive. Plus, I don't know if you noticed, but those bath fizzies that I made without citric acid, they were really crumbly. They were hard to pack in. They didn't really perform the way you would want for a bath fizzy to perform either. So, didn't fizz and crumbly, not a win. Now, of course, if you wanna make what I just demonstrated, absolutely, I'm gonna pop those recipes, recipes, into the description below, and you can totally make them. Otherwise, check out some other videos on the soapqueen.tv channel. I've got bath fizzy videos there. I've also got tons of free recipes for bath fizzies at soapqueen.com. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to make sure you're alerted every time a new Soap Queen TV video comes out. 
Until next time, you guys, I'm so glad that we got to experiment together and figured out what worked and what didn't work with bath disease. Happy soaping. Thank you.